Anyway, let's just get that out. Which one first? Eat your hemlock. That will trigger this drug. Call the ambulance. Four years ago, I started one of the weirdest experiments I've ever done. I read that ancient cultures used to store olives in brine for many years, typically in large clay pots. So I thought I'd have a go myself. But instead of curing and storing our olives in clay pots, I used a regular beer fermenting container. Exactly four years later, and it's time for a taste test. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and let's get into it. In February 2016, Nina and I harvested 10 kilos of olives from our olive trees, which isn't remarkable. Itself, what is interesting is that we live in a subtropical climate considered too warm for olive trees to set flower and fruit, but they did. It's now 2020 and our trees haven't produced fruit since that harvest four years ago. How dare you? I suppose it was just good judgment and luck that I decided to preserve our last harvest. Or was it? We'll all find out soon. Honestly, not even I know what these olives are gonna be like. Oh, admit and I've pulled the lid off and had a bit of a peek inside but that's essentially all I've done. You and I are going to go on a culinary journey for the first time to the unknown together in real time. But before we do that I want to give you a quick background story about why I started growing olives and the process I went through to get to this point. I've always loved eating olives so it made sense to me to try growing them and when we finally moved to our lifestyle acreage olives were among the first fruit trees I planted on our property. That was before I realized olives have a unique growing characteristic whereby they thrived in a warm subtropical climate like ours but don't fruit very well. See, although olives come from hot, dry and arid climates like Iran, Syria and into the Mediterranean, they have adapted to withstanding cold periods also typical of these regions through winter. And it's during these cold months when the olive tree goes dormant, triggering flowering in the spring. Our olives think they're in perpetual summer, I kid you not because our winters often don't get cold enough to deliver the chill factor required for flowering. To make matters worse, we've had abnormally warm winters over the past four years, limiting olive production even on those varieties that supposedly require less chill. We're currently growing four different varieties of olives, Kalamata, Manzanello, Arbaguina, and Helena. The Kalamata I purchased for a steal at the local nursery, obviously because they couldn't get rid of it. It has grown pathetically slow and ugly, never flowered and probably never will. We have two Manzanellos, ones behind me in our orchard, and they by far are our best or were our best olive producers. The several Arbaguinas require the lowest chill out of all olive varieties, but they don't produce a very big olive, although it is pretty tasty. And finally, we have three Helena olive trees. One I grew from a cutting myself, and the other two I purchased assuming that they would surely grow a ton of fruit because they come from nearby St. Helena Island, right off the coast of Brisbane. And in the 1800s, the Helena olive grove produced enough olive oil to export back to Italy. Not only did they export olive oil back to Italy, but it won awards in Europe. True story. Our Helena olive trees are around 13 years old, so they're getting on. And in that time, we've harvested not one single olive. They do look nice though, and you could use the leaves to make a rich antioxidant tea. But in all practicality, they are just wasting valuable space, shading out more productive fruit trees and that's why I'll soon be pruning them back savagely. Anyway, we had a reasonable harvest back in 2016, so I'm not gonna whinge too much more. And the way I started the curing process back then is the way that I had always been doing it, which is 
I first made a brine at a ratio of four tablespoons of sea salt dissolved in one liter or quart of water. Make that spring water, not tap water, unless you've got really good tap water. I score the olives to allow the brine to penetrate faster. And then I go through a brining process of replacing the fresh brine after the first week, then leaving osmosis do its thing for as long as it's required until the olives don't taste bitter anymore. This can take up to 16 weeks. But as you know, I didn't stop there this time. I left this batch of olives to ferment in several different places over that four years. The kitchen, underneath the house out the back, and even in our laundry. And now it's time for me to find out definitively if olives will indeed stay preserved in a brine for all that time. All right. Here we go. Now in here, to hold the olives underneath, I had placed in a, a plastic sort of tray. You could put a plate down, but this is a food grade tray that I placed on top and a jar filled with brine itself. So if it opened up, you know, the brine would just mix with the other brine. It looks pretty ugly. And there's some white mold growing on top. The last time I remember scooping off any mold was probably two years ago. Anyway, let's just get that out. I'll give you a look straight in here. There's no terrible smell coming from it at all. There's no bad odor, which is a good sign. It pretty much doesn't smell like much at all. It just smells like brined water. There's a bit of an olive scent there, but not much. What I'm gonna do now is just drain it all out. And I'm just gonna drain it straight onto the table. It should run in that direction. There we go. They're very soft, but they're still mostly intact, although you can pull them apart pretty easily. And there's the pit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them a bit of a rinse off using this fresh water, but I'll rinse them off all properly when I get upstairs into the kitchen. I just wanna taste test some of these, just a couple of the black ones and the greener ones, and see how they've held up. So, let's just gently put some of these in because they are very mushy. But I'm still surprised at how well they've held together. So put them in there, give them a nice rinse. back through. Rightio, that's what we've got left. Which one first, a nice black one or a nice plump green one? I'll try the black one first. These are the more riper and older ones. The green ones are typically less ripe. If I pass out from some horrible, awful food poisoning bacteria, call the ambulance. Here goes, nothing, Socrates, eat your hemlock. Fairly salty, earthy, not overly flavoursome, but I, you know, it tastes like a, a soggy olive, to be honest. The green one, green one's better. Green one's got more flavor, still very soggy. Then you've got that skin on the outside, which is a bit unpleasant. There's a bitter aftertaste. It seems like the Olupean hasn't quite seeped out of them, maybe because they haven't had that brine changed enough and rinsed out of it. And that could be an issue with, you know, just my process rather than it staying in that brine for so long. They wouldn't be my favourite olives ever, but 
I've got to say that this isn't usually how you eat them. Most of the time, after processing, you would marinate them in an olive oil with some herbs and spices, or in this case, I wouldn't serve these up to people. I would pretty much make a tapenade out of it. That's probably what I'll do now. Go upstairs, put them in the fridge, let them cool down, rinse them off properly, and make a tapenade, and then add herbs and spices to it. And I think that would then make quite a nice dish, something that you can put on cracker biscuits. It would definitely be edible and enjoyable. I'll have another transverse jug. <laughs> Four years. Wow. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is different. That is very different. You might not want to store olives in a brine for four years, but what this mad experiment does show is that olives can indeed be stored and preserved for quite a long time. Like ancient civilizations probably did 6,000 plus years ago. And, you know, I think it's worth having a crack at. Yes, you can preserve olives in so many other, probably better ways. There are many ways to cure olives, by the way. So yeah, mad science experiment, but it was fun and it was an interesting result. If you like this video, make sure that, and you want me to survive, make sure you give me a big helpful olive thumbs up and hopefully I will be here for the next video. Now I'm feeling okay. Honestly, I am feeling all good. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs> oh, jeeps. Getting late.